Right out guys, welcome back to another episode. This one's gonna be a little bit different. We're not gonna show you amazing locations and how to get there and what we do, although we are in a sweet spot. This is called Kinkuna National Park near Bundy. I'll get back to do a quick 360, check it out. We are right on the beach, swing right around, babe, and then look back at the van here. Look at this. It was a fair mission to get in here, low range, tires down, but I tell you what, it's bloody worth it and it's only national park prices. So this episode, what I'm gonna do, well, firstly, I want to thank all you guys because we've had massive support throughout the whole series and the feedback for us is priceless. And uh, that's what this episode's all about. So I want to thank you guys, but I also want to give you feedback on the van and the car because everyone always says, how's, it, how's it's going after the 12 months of travel and all the tracks we've done, all the punishment we've put it through. So I'm going to take you through. We've given it a little bit of a tidy up, but as you can see, it's pretty bloody filthy. We haven't washed it for about six months. This is what it looks like when we normally travel. I'm going to give you a warts and all review on the car, the canopy, and the caravan, so you can know what to expect. I'm also, um, I'm gonna give you a few treats, well, a few discounts anyway. So we're lucky enough that, because we work with so many brands in the industry, we can get you guys discounts on products and the gear we use. So you've seen it, we've used it, and we can recommend it to you. So I'll point them out throughout the vid, and then I'll have a link and uh, in the video description as well, so you can go and get it for yourself. Um, and enjoy it because we love the shit. Anyway, right oh, let's start with the van. Come up here. Right oh, so I'm gonna start at the front and just work our way around. So to give you a bit of a reminder, this is a Willow RV Boab X. We had a lot of input into the design of it uh, with inside, outside, functionality, that sort of stuff. So um, it's 20 foot nine, it's got a tear weight of 2460, 2470, uh, ATM of 3200 and a 165 kilo ball weight. Right, so. What would we change about it? Pretty much nothing. There's a couple of little alterations we would make, but only if we could make it bigger. That's the only thing, you know? To get what we've got in a 20 foot nine van to fit five of us in it and live comfortably and go over where we've gone this year, mate, it is a bloody brilliant van and we've had no dramas. Nothing we couldn't fix ourselves. I'll show you those on the way through, but we've met other people around the traps that have spent 130, 150 grand on caravans and it's been back to the factory three, four times in the 12 months that they're trying to travel. How much of a pain in the ass is that? So anyway, start at the front, right at the very front, the DO35 off-road hitch. In my opinion, it is the best hitch on the market and it makes traveling to places like this easy because of the articulation, everything spins. It makes it easy to hook up. I think it's a great bit of safety and a, well, just a quality component. Rolling back, we've got the brakes. So this one, we've changed it. So I'll keep going with the Cruise Master stuff. We opted to put the uh, XT disc brake suspension underneath, which is a trailing arm independent coil spring suspension. And it's got disc brakes on the end of it. And I'll tell you, it has been brilliant. We haven't had to adjust the brakes or get our drums full of dirt the whole way around on all the tracks we've done. This here is the electric over hydraulic brake booster. So standard Red Arc Toe Pro in the car, power comes into this. This is like an electric piston, like the brake, the master cylinder in your car, but it's electric over hydraulic. That activates, brake fluid goes back to your discs, applies your brakes. Super good, like the performance of these brakes over drums is awesome. They don't slap on, they don't come on hard, they release and apply as soon as you put your foot on the pedal and take it off. Gas bottles. Now a lot of people say, why don't you have nine kilo gas bottles? Well, I don't need them. After 12 months, well, we've only ever had four and a half kilos to tell you the truth, but with this band, uh, why would we need nines? We've got a battery system inside that runs the fridge uh, and everything else we need. The gas, all it does is cooking and hot water when we're free camping. So we've got two four and a halfs there, so if one runs out, you've always got another one. One bottle lasts us, I don't know, six weeks, eight weeks, you know, something like that. I've never really tried it, but we've never run out. And it saves your tow ball weight. It saves like 10 kilos off the front of your van. So that's perfect for us, we love that. What we did with this van, we don't have front boots. We got rid of those and we brought the whole bed frame forward inside and so we could run a tunnel boot. So come around this side. This is what we've done. This is the full tunnel boot and it's been fantastic. Like we, it's never really well organized because you just chuck stuff in. But we, <laughs> all our leads, our hoses, our sullage, our chairs, uh, a few tools, wheel chocks, the kids' bike helmets, that sort of stuff, all just gets chucked in there and you can drag it out. Easy access. Yeah, you might have to crawl in there sometimes and pull stuff out, but it's no biggie. Um, here's another one of these things you can get a discount on. All the navigator gear that we use, you can get 15% off. And that's, that stores all our electrical leads. This one stores our sullage. 
the kids' chairs are in there, and I'll show you some other stuff later. But it is brilliant gear built for caravanning, and it's got a purpose, you know. It's bloody good, been well thought out. Chuck that in, slide back. This is our hot water system. It's been brilliant. Hot water is gas and electric, no dramas. All our windows are these sort of style ones, the Finch ones. Uh, again, we've had no dust inside. We've only had one issue with this fly screen here, um, and we're getting that replaced. We're at Bundaberg at the moment, and we're going to Searles RVs where we bought the van from, uh, and they're just gonna fix a few little things up under warranty that have um, dodged along the way, but it's nothing serious. Just little things like fly screens and door latches and stuff like that. It's really nothing bad. Uh, let's keep rolling. Fridge has been fine. I won't tell you much about that. It's Dometic, 185 litre compressor fridge, and it's been, well, pretty damn good. Uh, kids bunk windows, no dramas, no dust, no water, no mozzies or bugs. Swing around the back. Now this is something I'd probably change a little bit at the back. Not so much functionally and what it holds, but just the way it looks. So, and uh, I'll give you another hot tip. Kmart bikes, they don't really like traveling for 12 months on the back of a van. They're $59 and uh, the dust gets into them, the bearings fall out of them, the pedals break. So we're down to one, but in the lucky it's nearly Christmas time. So we can get the kids some new bikes. Uh, this draw bar on the back, it holds everything we want, right? We wouldn't get a second spare. I'd still only keep the one spare. I'd have the two fuel jerrys on there, but I'd probably change them a bit. Um, but I'd, what I'd do is I'd get this to come out and up a bit, and then just have a bit of a, a cage on the inside, which you can mount like um, uh, firewood and stuff and throw a bit of extra stuff in there. And it just tidies up the back, make it look a bit tougher rather than, I don't know, I just, it looks a bit grey nomady for me, but it's all good. This one, we got two of these. There's one of these on the spare here and one on the back of the ute. And as you can see, that chocker's full of rubbish. When you come away free camping, you need somewhere to put all your rubbish. And it's surprising how quickly uh, all your garbage adds up when you've got a family of five living in a van. So make sure you got at least one of these, but two is awesome for um, keeping all your rubbish, taking all your stuff with you, keeping your dirty shoes, your sandy clothes, beached toys, all that sort of stuff out of the van, out of the car, keeping stuff tidy. This Thule bike rack, uh, first time we've had one. We've always had a Fiamma one on our other two vans. Uh, it's been great. It's sort of, it's different to the others. I sort of, well, it, to, no, it's not shit, Beck. To be honest, I'd prefer the Fiamma one. Just the way the clips work. And they, um, these are like a, a, uh, clamp. a frame clamp, right? But they sort of don't, it'd be handy if they had three bikes the same size, it'd be perfect. But because they usually, go big, smaller, smaller, it's hard to get them all on the frame and we have to clamp the seat. And uh, these ones aren't as easy to use as the Fiamina. Same design and it works the same, but it's just not as user friendly, I don't think. But it's not a, it's not a game changer, like it's, it still works, but we prefer, we prefer the Fiamina one. Uh, swing round here, what do we got? Oh, let's talk about under the van, right? Water is a big question we get lots because we free camp lots. How do you get water? Where do you fill up? We have three 95 litre water tanks under there and that lasts us, well, we can be pretty skingy with it and we can probably scratch it to nine or 10 days if we had to. Generally, we can do a week easy and that's everyone having a shower at night and cooking and cleaning and doing whatever. Uh, there's still, you, you do your dishes once a day, you have short showers and we normally take drinking water as well. Although we do have a water filter inside, which I'll show you, which has been awesome. So uh, let's go awning. Now, this is a Dometic awning. We have no affiliation with Dometic, but I reckon if you're gonna get a van, get a Dometic awning. We've had the carefree one before, and although they're the same principle and they work the same, the quality is just down here compared to the Dometic one. And when you're gonna use them, you're gonna roll them in and out and use them as much as we do, and if you do when you're traveling, I think it's well worth just spending a bit extra money to get the Dometic one. In, in my opinion, it's better fabric, better quality, better fittings, especially where it locks out at the end here. So um, yeah, we've had issues in the past with the others that they sort of fall out of there and yeah. Just anyway, our opinion, Dometic, it's the way to go. Flooring, we have had this for so damn long and I tell you, I'm not gonna say it's the best because it's not, but it was cheap. It was like 80 bucks maybe from BCF. It's a Kamek branded one and it's done the job. It's not the best at keeping the sand out and stuff, but hey, it is what it is, I think. To give you an idea of what's the best on the market, we can find from talking to people and that, they're called Sea Gear, but they're about 350 bucks for one this big. And they're like, they were designed for military purpose to land bloody helicopters on. So it keeps all the sand and stuff out. Maybe one day we'll get up to one of those, but this has been, but it's fine, mate, it's fine. 
Uh, our toilet hatch, it's just standard Thetford toilet. No dramas with that. The only thing we could ask for is that it was bigger. I think we might even start carrying a spare cassette uh, when we do more, like, if to do more free camping. It'd just be handy to be able to slap another one in. And then out here, 12 volt socket and an external aerial for the TV. To be honest, we've never used it. We could probably get rid of that. Yeah, chuck it. There's a power outlet, 240 outlet for outside. We've never used that either, but that might be handy for others. All right, so while we're under here, I'll show you a few things that you might not see on the outside of our van. You won't see speakers. In our opinion, I'll run through a few things actually that I don't reckon you need. They always try and upsell you when you buy a caravan to get a stereo and external speakers and also an outdoor shower. So we've had both in the past and well, for what we do and I think 95% of people, you're not gonna use them, eh? So save your money, spend it on something else because I don't know, we don't need external speakers. You carry, everyone's got a Bluetooth speaker, yeah? Like a little Yui Boom or whatever. We just carry that everywhere, that's all you need. And then the external shower, we use the tap on the drawbar. Like you don't need hot water outside. Just, um, shh. like you can if, it's, if that's what you want, get one, but honestly, it's just two optional extras that I don't think you need on a caravan. Um, righto, drop down table, fine, no dramas with it. The only thing we want is one without keys. I've seen ones with like a push button instead of a key, you can just push the two buttons and drop them down. It's a pain in the ass having to get the keys all the time to come and get it. But that's just, we use it day in, day out, a little gripe. Lights on the outside are fine. Uh, they're really good because they're not too bright. Make sure if you're getting external lights, sometimes they put like massive LED floodlights on the outside. It's not enjoyable, unless you can dim them. Um, yeah, it's too bright and you can't sit out here and enjoy it and it just attracts millions of bugs, right? Um, let's go, wheels and tires, they've been fine. They're just, uh, they're primal wheels, standard radials that come with it, they're all terrains. We haven't any dramas, never had a flat. If you drop your tire pressures and go slow over the stuff, I think it's fine, you know? I would like on the next van maybe some bigger tires and more aggressive tread just because of the trips we're gonna do next year. But um, for that, and you've seen all the trips we've done, that's fine. Uh, this little beauty here, like I think this is why we can get away with not having the best annex mat, because this here, I'm gonna show you, it's called a muck mat, right? And here's another little, another little discount we got for you, so check out the link at the end. Um, but yeah, you can get them in different sizes and they're just like an artificial grass mat, and you can roll them up uh, like this. They got a grip on the bottom of them so they don't slide anywhere. And a little Velcro strap here that goes around and ties it up. And we just chuck it in the side there when we leave. But it has been great. And then when you pull up for overnighters and that, you don't have to drag out your big mat and uh, peg it down. Just kick that out and it's enough to brush all the sand off and stuff. Stop mud. Yeah, yeah. mud and dirt and grass and the whole show. This step, beautiful. I don't even know what it is. It's just... It comes with it, yeah, we've had a power step before and it was just a pain in the ass. It used to get clogged up with dirt and dust and then you'd press the button and you'd have to half pull it out anyway. So there's no point. Just get one of these spring-loaded ones. It's been a uh, bloody beauty. Uh, the one issue we've had, like I told you, I'm going to tell you what's gone wrong with this van, is um, this door, right? And well, it's another thing we're going to get fixed in Bundy. They've got an updated door because we've given them the feedback. Uh, they're going to address the problem and sort it out. We had a bit of dust coming in here because they just, oh, there's like four locks, right? So you've got four locking mechanisms that hit on four latches here. And I could just never get the tension right to give it enough compression on the seal to stop the dust coming in around the bottom. Um, so we fixed it with, they sent us out a new door seal, which has got a bigger compression rubber. And we fitted that and readjusted it and that stopped the dust. Um, but the other issue is it splits, it's two, two halves, right? And we were getting dust through the two halves as well. And this door latch was, um, the pressure needed to open it was too much for the kids to do, and it still is. Um, so it was a pain in the ass. We'd have to open the door for the kids all the time. That's getting changed in Bundaberg. We're getting an updated door and uh, a new system to open that. Um, but it's good, this is security, so you can split them and lock them. It's a good idea, but it just needs to be refined. And I think they'll do that when they fit the new one in Bundy. Uh, yeah, and this screen too. Another Same, great idea, but um, our kids went through it a few times and we've busted the clips and uh, it's not looking the best. So that'll get replaced as well. Great idea, and if you didn't have kids that fell through it, it'd be bloody, it, it wouldn't be an issue. Righto, and then one of my favourite parts of the van is the barbecue. Now you might think that they might have rattled around or fell off or whatever. Uh, nah, it's been brilliant. It's on a set of slides there with a locking lever. You pull it out, connect it to the uh, gas bayonet there, and 
in my opinion, it is the easiest way to have a barbecue in your caravan. I know oh, Webbers and Ziggy's, it's kind of like Ford and Holden's or whatever, everyone's got their favorite barbecue. And I know, but Webbers are wicked barbecues, I know that. But the fact that we can slide the, the lid under there, push the barbecue away and just plug it in and plug it out without having to drag another table out, set it up, run a longer lead, uh, lock the thing up when we're not there so no one pinches our barbecue. Uh, it makes it, us use the barbecue a whole lot more and it's just easy to store. It goes in there, don't need to tie it down. I, I just love it, it's great, you know? Each to their own, but for me, it's a brilliant system and it works an absolute treat. Righto, pretty sure that's the outside of the van all done. Come inside and I'll show you around. Oh, the things we've changed along the way and uh, a few little issues that we've had that are going to get fixed in Bundaberg. All right, and this is the inside. So we'll start up the front and we'll swing around and I'll show you everything inside the van and how it's worked and if we change anything. So let's start with one thing we did change. We upgraded in Karatha and we got a bloody brand new mattress fitted. It was like a custom jobby from a mattress factory. Full, it's like the mattress you'd have at home in your own house because we live in it full time. We're like, bugger this poxy caravan mattress let's get a good one and we just got them to custom cut the corners off it so it fits in there so it's full queen size it's just got the corners rounded off right i think if you get the upgrade when you do buy a van to get the pillow top mattress that's going to help a lot we just had the standard one in there so um anyway test them out before you get one because you're going to sleep on it for like if you're like us you're going to sleep on it a lot uh one thing we put in this van is a lot of these different storage pockets so you'll see over there on this side on that side and then swing around back you'll have like there's a ladder of them there with all different storage so it makes it life easy when you've got somewhere to put all those knickknacks and they don't end up in a box under the bed or stored around or falling all over the floor so just having all those little extra bits of storage is um mate it's made life easy heaps of clothes for us so uh, another big question is how do you carry enough clothes to wear full time well these are my clothes in here and here beck's the same on that side plus she's got another box and um, knickknacks under the bed with different clothes right um that she probably doesn't need does she no. dear but anyway yeah <laughs> um more storage down the side here so we've got extra shelving down there and another one underneath which stores like our vacuum cleaner and stuff and i'll show you this this is pretty cool this is some more navigator gear they're like pantry buddies and i've just screwed them to the timber there and they hold the kids water bottles so they always know there's full water bottles they can come inside and grab one and smash into it um one of my favorite things is the big window. Like a lot of vans don't have a big window on the front above the bed. That makes free camping amazing because the amount of airflow you get through by creating a bit of a wind funnel, you know, by having the front open and everything. And it's really nice to sleep having fresh air in that when you're free camping. Also, the fans. These things, mate, are brilliant. I haven't used any other fans, or I have actually. I bought some cheapies from BCF once. They were like ones that truckies use on their dash. Um, but these are Sirocco 12 volt fans. They are fully adjustable this way, that way. They clip up and they swing away. Um, and they use stuff all current and they're quiet and they make it free camping so much better when you can be nice and cool and sleep. We've got five of them in the van currently, one each side and one in each of the kids' bunks. And we're about to add another one here because it does get a bit hot sitting there. If you haven't got any breeze coming through the window, we can slap one here and put it on the dining area where we're cooking. Uh, these pouches, brilliant. We store our laptops on either side there. You can use them for magazines, books, headphones, phones, do whatever you want. And the nooks inside here are awesome just for storing oh, phones and hard drives and whatever else. Plus there's dual USBs and power points in there and extra dual USBs and power points there. So everything these days that you use is bloody charged on usb chargers by the seam of it so make sure you got plenty of them put around the van it makes it easy to use everything uh right oh let's go what do we got this one here there's another one here i'll show you this we just little key hooks which are handy um another leather pouch we use it for hats and well whatever else usually like the um caravan park gate code or the map or whatever sits in there and then swing around to our battery system which has been absolutely insane. Um, I'm not gonna pull all its chairs off and show you the system. I'll just put some overlay footage in of it. But to recap on it, it's a full Enerdrive off-grid system that we put together with the boys from Enerdrive and it's 300 amps of lithium. You can jump up, babe. Uh, a massive inverter, 3000 watt inverter, um, solar controller, uh, DC to DC charger and an extra solar input and 600 watts of solar on the roof with four panels and that enables us to run this van as if we were on a powered site. Aircon, 
Um, everything bar the hot water. I didn't hook the hot water up to it because old Becky Boo, in our last van, you know, you've got two switches, right? Um, gas and electric. Um, well, sometimes Beck would hit the electric and because the battery system could run it, it would. And then all of a sudden we'd be like, oh, shivers, we're smashing that battery because we're heating up our hot water. So now um, I've disconnected that one when we got it built and it just runs on gas um, unless we're plugged into 240 volt on the outside. This, uh, what do we got? This one here, this is one thing we've had break, but it's from the kids standing up there yanking it. And they're gonna fix that for us in Bundy. They'll just have to pull it off, pull it round, restaple it and put it back on. Uh, I think that's more user, that's user error. That's schoolwork and stuff, that, what we do every week. Beck pulls it out of their big bags and stacks it in like that. Um, what we did do when we first got the van, we changed a few things and the guys redesigned it and sent it out to us and I fitted it myself. So originally there was this one drawer and then just a big cupboard here, right? So we've got them to change that and uh, send out new stuff and I turned it into three drawers. Makes it a whole lot easier having drawers rather than cupboards because we've got a big cupboard here anyway with lots of shelves. While I'm in here, I'll show you. This is our water pump um, filtration system and it lives in under here. It's just a cartridge and um, all you do is carry a spare one and if that ever slows down or starts looking yucky or tasting yucky, you just switch it out. And that gets rid of stuff like sediment, chlorine, taste, odor, and parasitic cysts. So if you've ever had a waterborne bug, like Yardia or something, you'd know that it's not bloody very nice, especially when you're a caravan. So get the guys at the caravan joints to fit one of these, or you can fit them yourself. You can buy them aftermarket, but, and then use your normal water tanks. As long as you're filling up out of potable water, just fill up all your water bottles out of that. We've been running it for 12 months and we've never been sick, right? Um, cool, sink's been great. This is a handy little thing Beck's got. I don't know if you get it from Kmart, dear, or Target, Tamart. Little um, timber drainage thing, and then these quick dry mats that you can get for about 10 bucks as well. That sits there, that sits there, and our dishes sit there and drain and dry really quickly, and then that gets hung up in the bathroom, and it's happy days. Um, righto, table. This has been great, but it is one of the issues we've had that um, it broke. So inside, there's obviously, normally it goes up and down and it slides in and out. Still slides in and out, no worries, but the gas strut on the inside uh, failed somewhere along the way, so I've had to just tech screw it together. But we're getting that replaced under warranty while we're there. Um, oh yeah, we added this in. This is another thing that was never there. It was just, uh, you'd have to lift the seat up to access it with a drop down with a lid. Uh, I got the boys to give me another door and I cut it out. And now we store all our oven trays, spuds, potatoes, um, sometimes, I don't know, soda water and whatever else, big bottles, heavy stuff down low. Yeah. Um, right. And the same wall, while we're talking about that, another one here. There was never anything here. So I got him to do another one and I... A fire extinguisher. Oh yeah, there was a fire extinguisher there, which now, if you swing around back, it sits under the bed there. With all our shoes. With all our shoes in a couple of tubs. So that was never there. Now that stores pots, pans, and uh, same heavy stuff. Just storage is king in a caravan. So anywhere you can find a little nook to put it in, do it. But the boys now at Willow, is uh, this is all standard. So all the stuff we've added in is all standard in the Boab. Um, there's the fridge, been brilliant. This little space up here is great for um, bread, coffee, our protein powders and stuff. Um, and then, what else? Spin around. Beck's beautiful Christmas decorations. <laughs> uh, Oh yeah, our pantry. So this is where most of our food goes. Oh, it's all right. We're pretty low at the moment, so there's nothing to see, but we just store all our food pretty much in there. Um, and it's easy access and it's good to go there and in those lower ones, like we said, and the fridge, obviously. But massive fridge, we find it big enough. We have had a bigger fridge in the past, a 210, that went right to the roof. I don't think you need it, hey. Maybe if you had an extra kid or something, and or more people you'd want to, but. Well, you didn't have a one in your car. No, or you didn't have one in your car. Yeah, true. Then you might want a bigger fridge. But, um, what happened there? Yeah, um, yeah but it, we find it big enough and uh, it works a treat. So, let's roll on down to the back where the kids are. This has been brilliant. Make sure if you've got a bunk van, you need a divider. Just enough, like it's not going to be soundproof, but it's enough to block the kids off, segregate it, make it a bit darker and sort of tell them that it's, I don't know, it's bedtime, you know, let's go, shut the door. Um, so yeah, make sure you get one, because I tell you, we've had a van without one and it's a pain in the bum. The kids have loved their bunks, haven't you? Hey? Yeah. They've got plenty of room. I one thing, oh, you do not, you Wally. 
They got fans in each one, like we said. They're full length um, and they're wider than the bunks in most vans in the van we had last. Uh, one thing we ditched that we will never get again is uh, DVD players. We're, we don't need them. Like, I think pretty much safe to say that most kids these days have an iPad, yeah. Um, so they can just use that if they ever watch anything in their bed. Putting a roof-mounted DVD player in, all it does is make it harder for the kids to access the bed and sit up like this. Like, Billy wouldn't be able to play in there because he'd be... All right. There's not enough room as there is, let alone having a DVD yeah, player right. to knock his head on. Oh, uh, like I kept hitting my head as soon as I woke up. I know you I'm did. Like, I, once I had a dream, I woke up and just like smacked my head and I'm like, had a massive egg. <laughs> all right, it's up the back, big cupboard up the top. So it's, it's all right, Beck. Beck's freaking out because everything's messy, but it is what it is. That's how we live. That just stores a lot of the school stuff, toys, um, detergent. detergent and stuff, and, and then the kids have a drawer each, so Jack, Billy, Charlie, they're just big, deep drawers, and that stores all their clothes. Yeah. So they don't have anything else. I'm what? getting a puzzle. You're getting a puzzle. Yeah. Sure there you I go. Want that puzzle. Dad, make sure oh. the Alright, I'll get it for you in a sec, darling. Okay. Take that one. So then we'll finish this bit off and then I'll get a puzzle out for Charlie. So into the bathroom if you can come in here. Um, it's, it is what it is, it's 20 foot 9 so the ensuite is small but it's livable and usable because we've done it so we can tell you it works. This is our floor mat we hang up here, I'll pull that down um, to show you in here and once again we haven't cleaned the shower so don't judge us please but <laughs> this is cool in here it's got molded storage things where we can put all your stuff uh, so you don't need to buy stick on ones all that the only thing I have done is add an extra one of these for Beck. so some days she doesn't want to have a shower and get her hair wet so with it up here all the time she couldn't do that so I got another mount and screwed it to there so she can put it in there it's also good for the kids as well but it's been brilliant we love the shower yes it's small but you know, you get in there, you get it done. Um, yeah, and our washing tub sits in there. So, because like we say, it's a smaller van, 20 foot nine, there's no space for a laundry sort of hamper. So we use one of those cheap um, flexi tubs, chuck it in there, and then when we have showers, you just sit it on top of the toilet. Uh, it works, it works. In here, one thing I'm gonna show you, I was worried about, and other people have messaged this, is that this shower screen, right, is, it, is a pull across one. Um, I didn't know how well it would go. And I thought it might get mouldy and all that sort of stuff. Well, it doesn't. I don't know. I found out that they've, they get treated with some antifungal stuff or something. Um, and the kids haven't broken it. So I'm pretty, you know, it's lightweight. It works. It stops the water coming out. So can't complain with that. Um, righto. Swing in here, babe. Righto. So in here in the ensuite, we have towel hooks up to carry the towels. We have another storage thing here that we added. And just um, Beck puts her stuff in there, her beauty stuff. I'll call it that. Nice mirror there for it to check itself out. And then up here is just more stuff. Um, ooh, plenty of cupboards for toiletries, toilet paper, all that sort of stuff. Another mirror, little sink, um, and a nice window. The only thing, we, we've had this come off, this edge stripping. So they're going to fix that in Bundy as well. Oh, and our washing machine. Oh, yeah, and our washing machine is here. It's only a two kilo jobby. It's really small, but it does the job. If we do a load every day or a couple of days, then it's really no drama. So, and the toilet. There you go. I'm not going to show you how that works. Everyone knows how to use the toilet. That is the ensuite. And that is our van. So, I think that's it. Come through here. Oh, huh? underbed storage? Oh, yeah, but that's standard. We've got underbed storage. I can show you that quickly. Oh, it's, a it's just, oh, well, that's what everyone's is. You're just going to chuck everything you don't use under there. But there's plenty of room for it, right? And then, well, one thing we can talk about is the grill. So we've only got a cooktop and a grill. Uh, we wanted the extra storage in cupboards like this. Uh, and we've got the Ziggy outside that we use as an oven. So we haven't missed it. You know, we, we might have used it once or twice in the last 12 months. Electric and three Yeah, gas. so yeah, electric burn, uh, plate and three gas. And um, the grill. So we haven't missed the oven for the, all those that ask. Uh, and a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to cook in my van, it'll make it stink. It doesn't, honestly. I don't know, unless you're going to fully burn something and smoke the joint out then it might stink but we've never had an issue and we cook everything inside a lot of the time so there you go i'll swing around here chuck us this babe come and sit beside me so they can hear you and then um yeah sorry beck didn't have much input into that but we just wanted to run around and it's super windy outside so i've got a um, remote mic on so you actually could hear me instead of the wind but um there you go yeah that's our van life 
It is, mate. Yeah. Our tiny home on wheels. And it works. Yeah. Just everything just works. The one thing we would change if we could um, is just get a bigger one. Yeah, we'd love to go, well, it's 20 foot nine, as Justin said, but yeah. we'd love to go to a 22 footer. Or 23, even. Yeah. yeah, we do miss that extra bit of space. Like for me, I love the extra bench space to prep for dinner and everything. So yeah. that's probably one aspect I miss. And being able to put a bin somewhere, I know it sounds so trivial, mm. but it normally lives on this hook here it. and it's an absolute pain. So we're just trying to figure out, 10 months we've been in this van and still haven't figured out how to bloody put a bin yeah. in here. So if you've got any ideas, help us out on where <laughs> to put a cool swing away bin idea. We're yeah. thinking we might chuck it under this dinner table somehow, no. but I don't know, it works. You know, we just it's chuck fine. a bag there, but it is a pain in the bum. Mm. It'd be nice to have an actual bin that you know yeah. the flip top lid or something but there's just nowhere to put it in previous vans we've had that and justin built in like a little hamper in our other 22 23 oh yeah for vans. the laundry yeah so yeah if we decide to get a bigger van um it'll definitely have some kind of storage mm. for a bin and a laundry hamper yeah but. but what we can tell you is that for a 20 foot nine van um and all the places we've gone <laughs> and we've punished it um we're bloody happy with it. Oh yeah. So, you know, we've taken you through, we've shown you a few things that have gone wrong and really they're not March hay, you oh, know? So, oh, can I just add, um, one thing with this van that we really wanted to do was not have white walls. Mm. And when you live in a van full time with three kids, your walls do not stay white and it's an absolute nightmare. Yep. So this is why we went for this, um, this wood look and it has yep. been game changer. I'll give you a quick look Absolutely at a, love an it. example of that because the only white we've got really is up oh, here. Oh yeah. And look at that. And oh, down there, babe. Mine's filth. And then down here where the kids come in and grab the handles and that. And um, yeah. And so I you can imagine, I know like, when you go into most fans in the showrooms, they might look all flash, but um, yeah, just and remember that. they do it. They do it for the women to go, oh, uh, wow, yeah. this is amazing. <laughs> they and do it to sell the white. don't get why. Yeah. Do whatever nah. you can. We, we had a light grey in our very first van. That was amazing. It was, yep. Um, oh, actually, the other thing, these cupboards, they're a matte finish, um, smudge proof stuff. You can still sort of see a little few smudges on them now and then, but so easy to clean. Yeah, another and brilliant. addition. Another addition. That we so spend yeah. some time researching your finishes and your decor in your van because mm. it can make life a lot easier and, down the track. Sorry, I'm adding all these things in. The ambient lighting, we've got, mm. it's really nice at night when the kids go to sleep, we can just pop on this ambient lighting. Just um, above that there. So yeah, so that's another. There's another one up the top there. Aspect we added. Yeah. So there you go. Now that is our a, van. A new throw rug. <laughs> so, oh, oh, hang on to it, I nearly dropped it. So, um, again, Thank you very much. I um, hope you enjoyed that and it got a lot of info out of it because we'd really like to help you guys in your planning and your research mm. when you do buy a caravan because it's a bit of a minefield and we've met so many people on the road that really regret their decision and their choice with what they've bought. Um, yes, we're involved with Willow. We work with them and we help design this van, but we can tell you from experience and from just Living genuine it. people yeah. that it is a good van and we are stoked with it so if you want to do the kind of stuff we do um and sort of know that you're going to be well i can reckon probably 98 percent worry free you know it's a good option to go and have a look at them mm -hmm. at least anyway so uh right thank you very much as always feedback comments um any questions flick them through we will continue to Put them out in episodes mm. and uh let this you know, is why we did this video know. because you guys were asking about oh. how the van was going how do you guys actually live in it we'd love to know where you store our stuff but um yeah we'll, we'll do more of these if you want to see them so yeah. yep. let us know i'll get back more involved she can do a whole yeah, interior van series for you mate. yeah because i've had lots of people <laughs> ask about like how i do washing and our nighttime routine and things like that so that's our plan is to go down that line as well if you guys want to see it we'd love mm. to know yeah she yeah. would. She'd be good at it. She's bloody uh, very decor orientated. Well, just if you didn't, you if you didn't notice by her Christmas decorations. Oh, there's nothing. Anyway, so oh. we'll leave it there. We won't dribble on, but I'll just give you a reminder. I'll drop a link in to our page where you can see all the discounts on stuff we use, and um, uh, yeah, you can check it out and you can save yourself a bit of cash. Uh, also, if you want to support our vids, we are on Patreon. You don't have to. All right. So like. YouTube has all our series on it. You'll see the videos for free, but if you find our content valuable and uh, you realize that we do work pretty hard yeah, on it yeah. and it costs us a lot of money and we don't make a lot, it'd be nice if you guys see some value in it and would like to support us in some way. Here's the Patreon so link, great. you can jump on. And it's also like a VIP access, right? So you can ask us any questions and we'll 
you get first dibs on, on replies and we'll also give out a lot more info on there than we will on social channels because a lot of the stuff we've learned along the way and how, to, how we've created this series and our online presence and work with brands and industries, I um, mean, in partners in the industry, uh, that's valuable info to us and we're not just gonna <laughs> flip it out there on socials for everyone else. But if you're uh, VIP access on Patreon, we'll uh, give you a few pointers. So anyway, let's go. That's it. We'll catch you later. Bye. Oh, you know what I just forgot? Mm. I haven't done the car. Oh my God. <laughs> all right, I'll take you outside and do the car. <laughs> and all right, this is the car, hey? It's a 2017 BT50 GT. You might have seen it before, you probably have. But if you haven't, I'll do a quick recap on what's involved and how it went this year and the last few years, right? So up front, ARB Summit Bar, intensity lights, warm winch. Underneath, if you duck down, we've got the ARB UVP and uh, recovery point. It's been priceless, I reckon. We've hit that a few times and um, we've had to use the recovery point as well. If you didn't know, most of the cars that come with them, like this here, you'll see this, that's just a tie down point for shipping. A lot of people use it as recovery points. It's not really that safe. You know, it might work once, twice, 10 times, but it's not the right way to do it. Uh, up here is a self I go, that's a mobile booster, and it works well, especially in places like this, where we've got like one bar of 4G, a couple of bars of 3G now and then. You switch it on and it gives you pretty much full service. It just amplifies that signal and allows us to like upload videos and photos and uh, emails and stuff. So it's pretty handy. Oricom UHF, it's a dual channel one inside. It's a DTX 4200, which means you can uh, get two channels and you can transmit on one, you can listen to two, which is handy for having your mates and listening to channel 40 and that sort of thing. Swing round, we've had to upgrade. The big question we get is how do you carry so much weight? We've got a Lovells kit, which got installed in Victoria and it's federally compliant, approved by RACV or Vic Roads. And uh, it was five and a half grand. It's a two inch lift, heavy springs in the front and rear, and it's engineered and certified to give us three and a half ton GVM, seven ton GCM. So pretty much all the time we are three and a half ton uh, whether we've got the van on or not, because when we do leave the van, we chuck a lot of stuff in it to take it away. But when we're traveling as a combined weight, we're about 6,700 kilos. So we're under the seven ton, but the car is always at three and a half. So we're still limited. I can't take a tinny, God damn it. Anyway, clear view mirrors. If you don't have these, when you're thinking about towing and traveling, have a look at them. They are legit amazing. I can't, I don't know if I can ever drive another car without them if I'm towing, because they're just, um, the vision they give you behind the car is brilliant and the amount of times we've bashed them on trees and stuff and they just fold in. Um, pretty happy with those, well worth it. Uh, Rhino Rack on top, it's a tradie platform that houses the swags in the cargo gear swag bags. That's the big question we get. They're Skydome double swags up top and they are ARB cargo gear swag bags. Keeps them dry, dust free, and when we do want to use them, we can whip them out and they're good to go. Everything stays in there. So there's sleeping bags and mattresses and everything inside. We just take our pillows with us. Rhino Rack Batwing Awning, which is a 270, goes right around. Good thing, but um, on windy days, really make sure you peg it down well because they can flip over your car easy. Uh, in the back, now, the Norweld thing, or the Norweld canopy package, is pretty much one of my favorite things in the world. It has changed the way we travel and camp and explore and made life so much easier. And uh, it's even convinced Beck to come away and do a lot more camping because it makes life so easy. So inside, right, 60 litre ARB Elements fridge, clear view drop down slide. So we've had a different brand before, a drop down slide. Uh, I didn't like it. It was a bit iffy, it still worked, but I nearly lost a few fingers and stuff. So these ones, clear view, the only drawback for them is they're a little bit heavier, um, but the function of them, they work bloody brilliantly, mate. And you can put up to an 80 litre fridge on them, slam them in, maybe even bigger actually, whatever you can fit in here. Uh, inside, this is our kitchen setup. Table draw combo, oh, run an induction cooktop inside. Uh, oh, I broke my headphones before, so I've just been gluing them up. But uh, dust free, water free. The canopy over all the tracks we've been on and everything has been amazing. Not one thing has come loose, not one thing has cracked. Um, there's no dust, haven't had any issues with batteries, mounts, um, like absolutely faultless, mate. We cannot fault the whole canopy system. Um, that is our kitchen drawer combo. Swing in here back. The battery system in here is Enerdrive as well. So tucked in behind down there is a 200 amp hour BTEC, a 2000 watt inverter, and then a full battery monitor system, cigarette lighter sockets, dual USBs and lighting, all done by um, Pro Touring Concepts on the Gold Coast, Caleb. Uh, 
And mate, again, faultless. Never have we had a flat battery, never have we blown a fuse, never have we had to fault find or diagnose anything wrong with this system. It's just worked whenever we've wanted it to and been bloody brilliant. On the back, oh yeah, these tubs at the top. Uh, we put this full length shelf in because we wanted to be able to put our clothes and stuff when we do go away from the van, we wanted somewhere to put them. So these at the moment have storage boxes and duffel bags inside of them. When we leave and go camping, they, came out, they come out, they get filled with stuff and go on the roof. Uh, the storage boxes go here full of food and then these get filled with clothes from inside and come with us. Works so bloody good, so good. I haven't found a better way to do it, so I'm gonna keep running with that. Um, around the back, we've got one spare, one fuel, because we don't have a long range tank in this, uh, so we carry a jerry. And we've also got another couple of jerrys on the back of the van that if we know we're going further away, I strap them to the roof as well. Ladder on the back, brilliant. Makes easy access to the top for tying stuff down and that. You're not trying to climb up the side and off the wheel arches and that. The X bar. Uh, with a standard drop hitch. This is something we fitted when we got the canopy done. It lifts your tow bar up. Uh, the standard one was sitting like down here, mate. It had these drop down plates that come right down here and there was no recovery points on the back. You would have had to take your hitch out and put a uh, aftermarket recovery hitch in. These one comes with three rated hitches, eight ton in the middle, four ton either side on the out there. And it's got a, uh, a bash plate underneath which protects all your wiring. So your 12 pin and for me, my Anderson plug. There you go. Underneath, we run airbags. So there's an air tank under there that's always got 200 pound of air in it. And I've got a remote wireless system to pump the airbags up and down. We generally run with about 10 pound in them. Uh, I don't need any more than that. Otherwise it just gets a bit rough. On the, the kidneys, uh, another gear bag, always full of something. At the moment it's full of snorkeling gear and fins and stuff, but uh, yeah, another great spot for rubbish and dirty gear. I'll pull this out, the trundle drawer. Again, dust free, water free with all the tracks we've been on. Keep heavy stuff down there, recovery gear, bit of fishing gear. We makeshift crab hook for WA when you're allowed to use them, which is actually just the awning pole to grab the strap on your awning. Uh, and then this side, this is pretty much the workstation where I keep all my camera gear and charges and that sort of thing. Again, dust free, water free, faultless mate. Like it's, I don't know, I can't rave enough about them because it is bloody quality gear. Drawer at the back is sort of, tools, spares, bits and bobs that you don't access too often. Uh, front one, again, oh, more camera stuff, GoPro bits, um, nicks and knacks and charges and whatever. And then, uh, yeah, this one's the same. Or little charging station set up with 240 volt power and then uh, USB chargers and Siggy chargers there to charge camera batteries and stuff. This is an overhead movable shelf. You don't have to have that. It's on uni strut in the roof. You can slide it back and forth or you can get different sizes or pull it out all together. We run this one because we carry a porta potty and it fits in the back there nicely. And then my tackle bag goes there and then it still gives us another layer of storage up the top there to keep stuff. So it's just not getting chucked in on top of each other. Works bloody awesome. DC to DC charger that takes alternator current from the car and pumps 40 amps plus in. It's also a solar regulator, so I've got a, a solar input on the front. I can put a roof mounted panel, or there's another solar input uh, behind the radios there. Uh, and I can run a flexible panel. There's also an auxiliary one there to run another fridge if I want to. Uh, Oricon radios, I'll show you them because you can get, like I've been telling you, oh, if I can get out of the charger, discounts. 15% off store wide at Oricon, all right? So I work with these guys to install the, uh, the one in my car back at Ningaloo Station. And it's good gear, eh? It's good gear, it's quality, and it doesn't break the bank. We've been using it flat out and can't fault it, so we recommend it. 15% off, free shipping, anything. On these, tire pressure systems, bloody inside. They've got a heap of different stuff on Oricom, so you can check them out, save yourself a bit of freight. Water tank, 45 litre water tank, there's the filler. It sits underneath there, and then there's a, a tap there, which is gravity fed at the back here. Another toolbox, which is locked at the moment. But it's got me air compressor and stuff in there um, and leads for uh, hoses for airing up the van and the car when we come off the beach. So there you go. This side shovel holder, I, I reckon you've got to have a shovel, mate. It's bloody, we've used it heaps, even if it's just for campfires, uh, but it's also handy for getting bogged and recoveries and that. The car itself, um, guess what? We blew an engine up. Yep, you probably all know that. But uh, I'll give you a bit of details into what happened. On the back of these engines, there's an EGR cooler with a coolant line coming in one way and one coming out the other side. On the outside, our hose split. We were towing up a hill just outside of Catherine on the way to Darwin. Darwin? Darwin? And uh, yeah, the hose split and 
pretty quickly pumped all the coolant out and overheated our engine, which then cooked the head, you know, so we blew the head gasket. And also once they checked it out and did some, um, they boroscoped it um, at Mazda, it had picked up on number three. So fair bit of engine damage, uh, covered under warranty. We got a new long block fitted. So this car now has a brand new engine and it's only got 98,000 Ks on it. So just a freak thing, I reckon, you know, it's a mechanical issue, whatever, blown hose, here's what it is. Um, but apart from that, that's the only issue we've had, mate. So I can't, the Mazda's been a really good car for what we do. Yes, it's limited with its GVM capacity and uh, we're, you know, we're at the top of that now when we sort of need to look at going something bigger so we can take a tinny and keep expanding our travels. But for what we've done, the way we've set it up, we love it. I'll be, be sad to see it go. Uh, fishing gear is here, babe, there. And my rods are on the other side. Yeah, on the, above the tubs, I'll just keep them in a roll and chuck them up the top. So anyway, I reckon that's probably enough. Um, there's nothing, yeah, that's enough of this chit chat. Uh, but uh, yeah, again, if you've got any more questions about the ute, send them through. But that's uh, a brief rundown or maybe a bit more in-depth rundown on the car and the van and how it's performed this year. And um, yeah, we love it. It's been a good setup. It's taken us everywhere. So come here. I'll give you this. We'll swing it around and we'll say goodbye again, my love. Again. Huh? Oh, you should see. She's so. She's like this camera weighs about two hundred grams. I know. My arms are getting a workout. She's giving a good gun workout. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, hope you enjoyed that. And like we said before, comments, feedback, put them in. We love it. Catch ya.